And we're live, guys. Hey, good, good evening. evening. Ladies, right. gentlemen, Joe. I'm damn glad to see we all made it back alive this week. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Turbulent. Hey, I got to ask real quick. What is a PEX 2022 I saw you advertising there? I'm glad you asked, Brian. <laughs> it is um, an event going on in Virginia City uh, in September. And uh, I'll be there. I'll be one of the, uh, the special investigators slash guests. Um, along with a bunch of others like the haunted side, new reality, um, oh my lord, uh, just all kinds of people. Off the top of your head, how much are tickets? Do you know? Um, so if you want the VIP tickets, uh, they're two hundred fifty bucks. But the thing is, is that it covers hotel stays for two nights. Oh, and you think I travel any other way? Six, six or or are we? Are, you know, are we talking the Four Seasons or a Motel Six? No, you're staying at the um, the Silver Queen. Oh, yeah, very nice. It's, it's a hundred bucks already for it. Well, all gotcha. right then. Yeah, just for gotcha. that, just for one night, it's a hundred dollars. So what a gaga! What, what's the date on that again? It is the um, I believe the 16th through the 18th of what oh. month, Joe? <laughs> Every month you. has the 16th through 18th. They do. Yeah, yeah. Huh. E even February. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. That's amazing. So, Joe, I hear we have a guest tonight. Yes, we do. And I'm excited. I'm very excited. Well, let's see who he is and let's All get right, going. Then. All right. Let's do it then. Damn, in a hurry, Gary. <laughs> I like this guy. I want to talk to him. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we have Kenny Biddle. Uh, he is a science enthusiast uh, who likes to take a look into uh, at claims of involving the paranormal. Um, he. Um, how do I want to put this? When it comes to equipment and stuff like that, guys, um, he, he will dig into it and he will. I respect you know, that. Debunk, do whatever. Um, I don't know how he how he wants to put that. Um, he also writes for the, oh, what is it? I can't see my eyes. <laughs> My, dude, hey, my, where are you going with this, Joe? Yeah, my words, vision, Joe. Come on, help us out. No, where are we going with this, Joe? My vision is terrible right now. I got blurred vision. Don't wow. you have glasses? Hey, drink some more Mountain Dew. That should clear yeah. it right up. Yeah, that's it your blood good. sugar spiking, homie. <laughs> yeah, a little more Mountain Dew will clear that. <laughs> that's your right glucose up. level going right up. <laughs> probably. Hey, probably. Can you, still you know what? I'm gonna bring him on. You know what? I'm gonna bring him on. And, okay, and bring bring him on. Anymore, yeah. Joe. It's time to do something about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, oh, I'm avoiding glasses at all costs. All right. Anyways, hey, Kenny, sorry for butchering that. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, what, hey, Kenny, would you, give him, a lot. <laughs> yeah, say, would you give him the similar advice? Maybe <sighs> just slide Cut down on the Mountain Dew bottle a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you might want to make an appointment with your doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 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 Oh, shit. Lay off the crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <clears throat> so it's actually really cool to have you on here. Um, you know, last time we spoke, it was regarding the Harrisville haunting documentary. Um, okay. And that was uh, a really cool talk that we had. Really interesting talk. Um, basically, you got right to the point on that. Um and it was definitely, you know, a lot of help. Um, so let's go ahead and and just you do you still investigate? I believe you do. I, I believe that you had gone. Now, with that being said, though, because people are like, well, he's a skeptic. He probably doesn't investigate. He probably just sits at home and you know watches videos or or of other people investigating. Or hey, if know. I can jump in real quick, Joe. You yeah. did a really wonderful job introducing him. Not really. Do you think maybe we could give him a chance to kind of introduce himself and explain his position or his theories or just what he does, who he does? Because to be quite honest with you, I'm a little confused. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's do this. Hey, Kenny, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm I I write a, a column for Skeptical Inquirer magazine. I also produce videos for them uh, for a series called Ghosts in the Machine. And basically, I do what I always do, and I investigate mysteries. Uh, it doesn't have to be ghosts. It could be pretty much any kind of mystery. Um, I've done ones where uh, I, one of the ones I'm proud of 
with the holiday theme is that I investigated the uh, uh, conspiracy theory that Elvis Presley appeared in Home Alone and oh, I went yeah. into that. Hmm. But that's the kind of thing I do. And, and like Joe mentioned, I get into equipment. So ghost hunting equipment, I get some, either I buy it myself or I have it donated, which is really awesome because people spend a lot of money on this stuff. Yeah. And when they donate it, I'm, I really appreciate it. But then I take it apart. Um, <laughs> I always make sure like, you're okay with this. I'm, I'm, you're not going to get it back. And if you really want it back, it's going to be in pieces because I completely take it apart. I find out exactly what's inside of it. I contact the manufacturers and see what the, each individual part is supposed to do. Um, and then compare it to the claims of the per person that sells it. Um, I also am big into photography uh, and I look at photos and videos with alleged ghosts and UFOs and cryptids or pretty much anything. I mean, mostly just paranormal uh, in general. And I give an opinion on that with an educated background. It's not just me pretending that I'm an expert and, and saying, well, you know, I've been a ghost hunter for 30 years. So therefore I know about photography. That's not the case. I actually know about photography. I've studied photography. I've, I've done it i've worked i've done portrait photography product photography landscape all kinds of photography so i have a background in that um and then uh yeah I, I i run two live shows where i talk about skepticism and science and they are both learning type shows so not only do i have guests on but i also do what i call an open mic night where people can ask questions and i can give an opinion i can give an informed opinion when i can and if i can't we look it up together and we go through it. I share the screen. You guys see what I'm looking up and how I'm looking it up. And then I do courses. I do workshops where I teach people how to solve mysteries, at least my way of doing it. It's not the way, but it's my way. Um, so that's, that's me in a nutshell. So hopefully that was better. And now you're not confused. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And, so, uh, okay. no, um, I got distracted. I apologize. I oh, that's have... cool. An important. Well, he's, not, he's not repeating it, so. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I heard all that. No, I had okay. an important message, um, that regarding some family. So we're we're. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, cool. I hear you. No, that's cool, Joe. We're just a little lighthearted fun, buddy. That's all. I know. Um, that. If your vision's blurry, that's between you and your doctor. Yes. <laughs> but seek medical care. Your gynecologist. Right. Yeah. So, so, yeah. <laughs> wow. I like this guy. I really like this guy. Maybe penicillin will improve your situation. Maybe it won't. Maybe it won't. One, one of the things I mean I can expand on too, because you touched on it that that I'm not I'm not like that. I don't know if what's what the uh the language uh rating is on the show. You're good. Um we can talk oh. and swear right now. Um all right, awesome. So I, I'm not that dickheads kind of skeptic. Um I, I try to work with people. And not against sure. you, um, unless you're a dick, and then by all means, I'm you know I'll work against you. But I try to work together. You know, I, I listen to your stories. I listen and try to figure out what's going on. I try to give plausible explanations. I try to work together to figure out what people have experienced, what they're doing, why they use the equipment. So I, I'm not. I, I don't try to write off anyone. I don't dismiss anyone. Um, I really try to listen to what you're saying and what you've experienced and, and your story. And we try to figure it out together. So. You know, a, a broad stroke comment, you know, and it obviously won't encompass everyone, but I kind of feel like in the paranormal, there's two types of people. Um, the skeptic that like yourself and, and I, I like to consider the three of us that um, when we have an experience that we capture on either audio or video um, we really throw it against the wall and try to shake it out and see what the hell, you know, what was the plausible, more scientific, if you want to call it that reason. And then you have the, I hope to catch anything. I don't want to know what the truth is. And maybe it'll get me put on a TV show in a, you know, two minute segment where someone judges me and says what if it was real or not. Um, myself, man, I appreciate your your approach and and the curiosity side of me. It, yeah, everything more than likely is explainable um and then there occasionally something happens that's not and and that's and that's amazing i like that approach that you have and and i appreciate the fact like you said you're not the dickhead skeptic that just says that's not plausible so that's I, cool thank you i appreciate it and and to clarify i try not to be that dickhead skeptic i mean once sure. in a while Sometimes I, you gotta I, do what you gotta do you know i mean I, one of the things i i live by one of my philosophies is the patrick swayze bull 
and that's to be nice until it's time not to be nice. Yeah. And, and that's pretty much it. I'm tr- I try to be nice all the time as Road much house. as possible. But it, sometimes it really is a practical guide. Sometimes you just gotta, you know. Sometimes uh, it, it's talking to a brick wall, you know, and or somebody wants to play the the stump the skeptic game, yeah, you yeah, know. And yeah. no matter what, I've been plenty of times when I try to have a conversation, and that's what I I don't try to debate. I try to have a conversation, but you try and try and try, and ten minutes in, and it's still they're they're trying to hammer away at me. I'm like, look, you know what? Nothing I say is getting through to you. You're not listening. You're just waiting for your turn to talk. Therefore, I'm going to stop talking to you and I'm going to yeah. move on because we're you're wasting both our time. So sure. let's just move on. Well, it's cool because it sounds like you've taken a lot of time and knowledge to do answer some of the questions that I've like when I Gary got me started in the paranormal. And so he introduced me to some of the gadgets and you know the things that we use. And I always ask the question of, well, just because the light's going off and it's making noise, what the hell does that mean? And why, what's causing it to go off? And so it sounds like you've actually dug into some of this equipment to answer those questions. And that's what I'm really intrigued about, because I've always said, just because this little meter goes and the light lights up, so, so what? As far as I know, it could be randomly programmed to do that, you know, in random intervals just to get your attention. Right. right. Um, and a lot of these devices are, they are borrowed from other markets, um, mm-hmm. if you will. And sure. even the ones that are customized or specifically designed for ghost hunters. No, they're not. They are usually novelty items that are taken from websites and then encased in a nice 3D printed box yeah. to look really cool. And they're marketed directly to paranormal people. And yeah. with the claims of it'll detect ghosts and ghosts can interact mm-hmm. with it. But there's for, for someone like me, I look for the data. Where's the data to back up that claim? You know, where's your consumer yeah. reports? I, I want to see it. I want to see the experiments. I want to see where it's published. Where where have you published the data? And mm-hmm. not one, zero of these manufacturers of ghost hunting equipment have done anything like that. Right. And it's a weird. lot of this, a lot of the stuff that people are buying, they can easily build for a couple for, dollars. For a couple yeah. bucks. I can show you an example. If you want a REM pod, there's your REM pod. That's it. This is $20. You can get off of Amazon. You buy it for $20. You spend a half hour. If you have any kind of skill with tools, you, all you need to do is solder some wires together, and you have it. I built three of these so far, and uh, I put them in. Like, I went to Michael's craft store. I bought one of those little wooden boxes, drilled some holes, mounted the LEDs, in them and i put everything in the box and that way when i take it to conferences and i set up my my skeptical booth at mm-hmm. paranormal conferences people can pick it up open it up and see what's inside oh, that's a great point. you know and it that's great because usually you have like the rem pods in that that pvc uh section of pipe you know yeah. it's all resined and glued and you can't see anything you have no idea what's inside yeah so right. at least this way you get an idea yeah yeah um there yeah. was um I won't mention names here, but um, he was making some equipment and somebody had actually take, took apart one of his um, devices. And this thing was like super glued like crazy. It wasn't soldered, nothing. All the wires were super glued together. And, no, to me. <laughs> and did you do that? It, it sounds familiar. Like the, You may oh, have. It was quite some time ago. The, the REM pod when I took that apart, the original one that was released, that was nothing. I mean, you have, you had literally had a four and a half inch PVC uh, coupling. Um, That's what it was from Home Depot. You buy them for like $3. Okay. And then the top layer where the lights were, where the LEDs stuck out and the antenna stuck out, that was a layer of resin. And the light sticks were actually glue sticks, hot glue gun sticks. That's what they were. Um, so when I dug it out, I actually broke off the resin on top and took out chunks. Um, and then again, like I'll, I'll show you what, this is what's inside this box. So it's just a breadboard and some wires. That's your REM pod. This was surrounded by cut up chunks of glue sticks. Like they took long glue stick, cut them in chunks, put it together and then hot glued everything together. So it was like a two inch thick 
just just layer of glue sticks, and that's what you were paying for. By by the way, Gary and, and Brian, what he's talking about was um, a a certain um, Road Warriors favorite device. No names. Robot. No, no names. names. <laughs> I, I'm on my best behavior this week. No names. No names. Hey. No names. So, so let me ask you this from your digging into it and all that. Can you explain how the rim pod works and what it's measuring? So it's, it's a little difficult. Um, it, it's okay. good when you have an electronics background, basically the antenna creates a, a magnetic field. Okay. Um, so anything that's conductive, including you, mm -hmm. if you get near it, you start to complete a circuit and that's what causes it to, uh, that's that's the very simplified sure. explanation of it. Sure, um, sure. But it gets into a lot more. Uh, if you've ever seen the uh, the musical instrument, a theremin, mm -hmm. a theremin yep. device. This is actually called a junior theremin device. Okay. Um, if you if you there right there, yep. it tells yep. you right on the box. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a novelty item. So if you get a big theremin device, it's a touchless musical instrument. It has yeah. two antennas. One controls tone. One controls volume. And the closer and all the scary them, movies out there have used them. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's basically it's an electricity uh, experiment. So cool. when you get close to the antenna, you you conduct the the field. You complete the circuit, and the more resistance that's in there, um, as the closer you get to it, the more tone or volume, depending yeah. on what you're playing with. And this is just um, more tone. Um, it doesn't have a volume control on it. Right. But it, it's very simple. Um, one of the main things that can interfere with this is a two-way radio. A simple two-way radio you get at Walmart, hunting stores, whatever. Um, if you key it up and inside a house, I've done it from almost 40 feet away. And I've also done it between floors. Yeah, so we've, had, we've done that between floors yeah. and had our walkies set it off. And we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, what common ghost hunting tools, electrical equipment, would cell phones um, cause to go off or activate or react, whatever words we want to use? Uh, so a K2 meter will go off. Okay. Your EMF meters will go off. Um, especially those. So the K2 meter is, I mean, that's a very, it's even though it costs like 50 bucks, I think the last time I checked, it's still the cheap meter. You know, yeah. very cheap components. It's too sensitive. It's really sensitive. Mm -hmm. And it's also single axis, too. That's an important thing. Um, so you actually have to rotate it around and get different readings. Um, okay. A cool experiment I did, a very, very informal experiment, but I had a meter in front of my microwave oven. Oven. I turned the microwave on. And as I'm let me, uh, just demonstrating here, so if I had it like this, it was reading like 50 to 60 milligauss, but all I did was turn it that much and the reading went away. Yeah. Mm, okay. And that's something that you have to understand because any orientation other than in line with that magnetic field is going to either wipe out the reading or increase the reading. Um, oh, there's so much more with that too. I mean, that doesn't EMF meters don't differentiate from one signal or one, uh, electromagnetic field than another so if you're in the middle of a room and you have a power source on this side and a power source on this side you're getting the average gotcha okay it's not going to tell you what frequency that's not what it does it measures yeah. the strength of that field um so, so if you different. if you if you put your phone in airplane mode does it still affect them like you're describing well, when you put it in airplane mood, then it stops sending out a signal. It stops looking for a signal. So right. I haven't because I know there's a, there's a lot of apps that people use, and they always say, "Oh, put your phone in airplane mode before you try to use any of the other equipment." Right. But yeah, don't I, worry, Gary. Even in airplane mode, the big brother can track you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> very true. I've only had I've had uh, EMF meters go off with a uh, with a phone <laughs> right next to it. I I've had it on my desk, like right here next to each other, and when this is updated, like Facebook or something like that, yeah, yeah. it's going off. It's giving me a little blip. Um, but it's got to be fairly close. It's not like something if you're, if you're sitting on a, a, a sofa and you have your meter on a coffee table, it's not going to pick it up. It's just not that strong of a field. Mm -hmm. so, so when everyone's using apps. That's kind of, I think, where Gary was at with that question. And set things mm -hmm. off. I don't. I I do not recommend using apps 
<laughs> when you're ghost hunting, um, I, I, and especially depending on what app you're talking about too, but most of the, most of these apps, if you read the description, most of them say that they're for an entertainment. You know, yeah. they're novelty items. Um, the ghost radar. Oh Jesus! Don't 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 fucking use that. Just, that. You know, <laughs> um, it, it's ridiculous. It's playing a video game that's just you can't control. It's just a random. Yes random it's basically a random number generator that just pops up little dots and yeah. you know gets people excited like oh look a yeah. dot. Well, it's it's like, with the apps that pop up with, with words it's just randomly throwing right stuff out there that's that's a great uh, uh talking topic that's a, because when you throw up random words you can have like the obelisk or the puck or one, any of those items that bring up random words think about when you're when you're on a, an investigation and people gather around, they're doing an EVP session or, you know, their question and answer session, they ask a question and they're waiting for something to come up. Even if you say like, you know, what year is it? If you don't get a number, if you get something comes across like chair, nobody stops and says, you didn't answer my question. So therefore that's a negative result. We're going to move on now. Most of the time, what happens is that conversation now shifts because instead of saying you didn't answer my question, most of, in my experience, the people say, well, chair, what chair? You mean this chair? Do you have something? Was this your favorite chair? Yeah, they start chasing answers. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, They're and filling in the blanks. Out there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you see that every question, everything that comes up because you're looking for anomalies. You're not investigating a mystery. That is anomaly hunting, and that's what you're finding. You're finding yeah. any anomaly and just latching onto it and saying, "Look, I have proof now." Whenever we investigate, we don't use all of this, but when we investigate, if it's using a spirit box, um, if we see one of us is starting to chase answers a little bit, we'll uh, you know remind each other, "Hey, let's not chase answers. Let's ask our questions, and either they answer them or they don't, and then we decide if this thing's working for shit or not." Right. Right. Uh, so. let's see, John, what's the difference between hunting ghosts and hunting for EVPs? If there is one, <laughs> I don't think there's a difference. No, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah. EVPs by, well, they're not by definition. I mean, by definition, it's electronic voice phenomenon. So you're, the idea is that it's the voice of a ghost. So you're still looking for a ghost. Um, I think ghost hunting is just any kind of anomaly. Whereas EVP hunting in this case means you're looking for any kind of weird noise. Um, it doesn't have to be. And that's the, one of the things. It's like a general statement. It doesn't have to actually be a voice. You know, people can get knocks and they're like, oh, look, you know, we got something. That's great. Yeah. Um, and I think you guys touched on it in the beginning. It's like you got a knock. So what? You know, There's not to be me. In the wall Lots of things called right. knocks. Yeah. 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 I mean, you yeah. uh, know, people walking across the floor uh are you monitoring the temperature to see if there's any expansion yeah. um, or contraction due to temperature changes because when you have a, a place especially if a place isn't used and it's not always temper temperature controlled now all of a sudden you have 10 12 people in there you know on a cold night and everyone's generating heat now you're changing the temperature you're you're raising it by a few degrees mm. yeah you're going to have some expansion going on and you're going to have that creak and pop and, and knocks. It's going to happen. So, right. I mean, I always say, if you have something that happens, you you have an experience, you see something, you hear something, you feel something, track down the source. Because until you find the source, you don't know what caused that. Sure. You can right. speculate all you want. You know, that, that's cool. I mean, you can say it's a ghost and I can say it's a it's an invisible dragon. We both have as much evidence. There is just that'd be really fun. cool, though. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah, lie, would, wouldn't it? That's so freaking cool. I, so many people. If I had a dragon, um, but yeah, I mean it, that's that's the that's the black and white of it. You know, gotcha. it's your job if you're calling yourself an investigator. It is your job to investigate, mm -hmm. not to throw out unsupported, unsubstantiated ideas or stories at me and say, "Here, prove me wrong." That's mm -hmm. not my job. You know, my job is to investigate mysteries. Your job is to investigate mysteries. That's what we give ourselves these titles for, you know, and they are self-titled. Nobody earned it. You know, yeah, it's just correct. like, oh. I've got a certificate right. from Mexico that differs, sir. I <laughs> dare to disagree. 
<laughs> well, I have I have several certificates to say I'm a, I'm a psychic. I'm yes. a dancer. I, I'm all kinds of certifications, but I didn't. Yes. I, I can't do any of that shit. <laughs> so uh, you, uh, let me Brian ask you. Had, oh, oh, go, ahead. Just go, to, go ahead, Gary. I, I was going to say, you know, Brian mentioned earlier, you know, we always try to go into it, a case trying to disprove the haunting. So I consider myself a skeptic, but I've also had experiences that I feel that uh, to some extent ghosts do exist. I, I don't know if we ever actually have asked you that tonight. You're a skeptic. But do you believe it's possible for the phenomenon to exist? Or have you experienced anything that you would say in this case, yes, I think there was something there? So I, I think there's always the possibility. I can't prove something I can't prove something doesn't exist. I just I can't. You, it's, it's the God question. You know, you, right. you can't prove or disprove. It just doesn't yeah. happen. My mm. understanding right now, my my way of thinking, and I don't have beliefs. I always try to explain that too. I don't have beliefs because beliefs are so hard to change because they become part of your core being. And it's very hard. I mean, if anyone was raised in any kind of religious household, you know what I'm talking about. It's very yeah. hard to, to let go of beliefs. So I have ideas. And right now, as far as I've seen, there doesn't seem to be any evidence of an afterlife. I'm still willing to see, you know, I, I keep going out. I do investigate. I don't know if that question came up, but I do investigate. I do go out and investigate houses uh, when people ask me, as long as there's testable claims. And we can get into that in a little bit. But I go out to other places. I just went to the Hinsdale house a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was invited up there and had a really good time. Um, no ghost, but I had a really good time. So the idea of do I believe in ghosts? No, I don't. Um but I'm still, I still have that open mind. Like I'm, I'm not so open that my brain going to fall out. Right. But I'm still open to it. I'll still go and listen to the stories. I'll still check out claims. I mean, that's, that's the job, you know, yeah. that's what I do. So I hope that answered your question. It does. I've got a quick follow-up because you kind of <laughs> mentioned uh, briefly touching on it earlier. And this one is one that always infuriates me. When someone, whether they're in person or on TV, is referred to as an expert. <laughs> I believe there are experienced investigators in this field. I don't believe there's... How can you be an expert in something that's theoretical? So, there's a couple points with this. Okay. So, <laughs> I would I would disagree with you that it's theoretical. It's hypothetical. Okay. That's fair. Okay. So, it's not, you can't really test it. In, in the scientific method... Uh, theory comes well after hypothesis. Hypothesis yes. is your first, your first step, uh, forming a hypothesis. So when it comes to experts, there are experts in folklore and carpentry and photography. There are experts like that. There are people that are considered experts. And um, you, you can go off of that uh, uh, philosophy. But then when it comes to the paranormal, I mean, the paranormal is a blanket term. What, what, the fuck does that mean <laughs> you know like it, it's everything it's everything because it, it's not just ghosts it's ufos and bigfoot and and stuff like that that's all encompassing but it usually refers mostly to ghosts and spirits and demons and stuff like that um are there experts in those kind of categories you can have experts in the folklore sure you know and, and that's what you have to look at you can't say well i'm, I'm an investigator and i'm an expert in paranormal investigation what does that mean? Yeah, that, that's what I was referring to. Is okay. Good. As an expert, as, as an investigator, I, you could be an experienced investigator. You could have gone on lots of cases or experienced a bunch of different phenomenon, but you can't be an expert. You, or you, I just, I don't. At least so that's I my play devil's opinion. advocate for a second. Oh, okay. Let's say you got a suitcase of equipment. You've okay. researched it, understand how it completely works, and every time you put it out, you know what you're measuring, why you're measuring it. So all the equipment that you use, you know, like the back of your hand, would that make you some sort of expert on that equipment? No, because to your point, if they had all that equipment and thoroughly broken it down like Kenny does, they probably wouldn't use most of it. Yeah. Well, you could. So let me let me pick How about back an on expert that. showman. Okay. So if you uh, if you say you have, um, I, don't, I don't know, let's let's go with an EMF meter. All right. Okay. Just uh, EMF meters. If you go to a manufacturer of them, not a ghost hunter store. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking an actual legitimate manufacturer of electromagnetic field meters. Yes. And they use it. They manufacture it for what its intended purpose is for electricians to use. If you go to that factory and get training. 
you're factory trained in in how to use it, how to handle it, what it does, how it works, how to interpret the results. Then yes, you do qualify as an expert on that. But that's that's how you become an expert on that by the training, by the people that actually make it, um, not the not the assemblers. And that's usually right. what your ghost hunters uh, stores are. They're assemblers. They're not they're not manufacturers. They mm -hmm. get the pieces. They get the pieces in kits like this, and they assemble it, and then they sell it to you at like three thousand percent markup. Um, because it's so ridiculous how much they they cost. That's um, crazy. Capitalism, yeah. love it. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I never went to kind of training for photography. I learned everything in, in the field on the job, and by reading books myself. Um, the books that I showed you before the show, you know, I, uh, the the shelves over here. There's two shelves worth of photography manuals, and I actually read them. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. When you when you buy a book about how to do something, you actually have to read it in order to, to gain that knowledge. You can't just have it on your shelf and say, look, you know, I, I own that book. Big fucking deal. Doesn't matter. You have to read it <laughs> and understand it. That's that's the second part. You have to actually understand what you're reading. Um, so, yes, when it, when it comes to photography, I I can be an expert on that. I usually don't, I feel uncomfortable saying that because I'm always learning. I'm always learning more. And in my eyes, I'm always thinking like, well, an expert kind of knows everything, you know, but the more I learn, the more I realize that's not a proper definition. An expert is someone that has a lot of experience and knowledge in a specific topic, a specific field, but they don't have everything. They don't know everything. Sure. They still right. learn. And that's where I am with photography. Um, and I still, even when you, you talk about investigating paranormal uh, uh, events or claims, I've done hundreds. I've solved dozens. I've written about them. I've done full investigative deep dive rabbit hole articles and videos on specific claims. Conjuring House, Bella Lugosi Mirror, stuff like that. And I can talk about those. But am I an expert paranormal investigator? I don't think so. I mean, I don't, that sounds weird. Yeah. I, I, I don't so consider weird. myself an expert either. I just have experienced a lot of different stuff, you know? Yeah. And so, no, but I agree with, with him, though, Kenny, that you can be a subject matter expert. I mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I think to a certain point, you, I guess you could be a, an expert investigator, but this is a field where, we don't know. Like we don't even know what the hell we're doing. To be honest, we're going in there. We're we're we don't we have no idea what we're walking into. We don't know what we're actually communicating with if we're communicating with anything at all. Right. So and, to me, I can see both sides of it. Sure. It's part probably of, you know just a matter of context. But some people really enjoy that term of "I'm an expert." Listen to me. And I'm like, eh, are you? I never claim to be an expert unless Gary's standing there, and I do it just because. Well, he doesn't. He knows like it pisses it. me off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So this this is this is a good question. If you make your own equipment, you are an expert in that equipment. Not necessarily, um, because I mean, I, again, I can bring out this and yeah, say you're assembling I, equipment. I assemble it. I follow yeah. the instructions. I assembled it. Am I an expert in this? No, yeah. because True. I still don't know what all the transistors are. Yeah, you're not the engineer. And, and, the and someone could come along and even if it's your own original idea and improve upon it. So then does that mean they know more about it than you did because they had a different idea on how to. Right. I, it's just, you, you really I, again, I think it goes look. back to context, you know. I, exactly. It's context. You have to understand where they're coming from, what kind of background they have. Do they actually have knowledge and training and, and experience in that? And not just going out every weekend. You know, going to a new place and ghost hunting, per se, every weekend. That doesn't mean you have 20 years of experience in, in doing that. That means you have 20 years of doing a hobby. Because, honestly, if you're going out to a different place every weekend and you're spending a couple hours out there, I seriously doubt you're doing a serious, thorough investigation of each place. I, I mean, I can guarantee you're not. Right, because you just only do so much. Uh, there's you know, so much I'm, involved. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, we, these places are expensive. You only have so much time now. If it's a residential, you know, or if you own a place, you know, then that's a different story. Then you can really sit down and you can really do research. 
you know, do everything that you need to do to do things properly. Um, but no, most of the time, I, hell, most of the time I'm going to like some location that I'm paying for and I only have it for like eight or 12 hours. Yeah. I'm not doing a serious, serious in-depth investigation. Well, I'm going there to have an experience. You're, so I, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I got two comments. One, the first one, Gary, there is one expert that's undeniable. If you're selling equipment, you're an expert at making money. <laughs> we all got to agree on that. I can't, I can't argue that. Um, and then to the point you and uh, Joe were talking about, there's too many factors in any location that every time you go, they will never be exactly the same. Right. So there goes your scientific experiment right. because sure. too, too many environmental, just anything that you can't control. Right. So you're not in that, you know, that soundproof box or whatever. And so every time you visit a location, there's going to be something different about it from the last time you were there. You're you are definitely on the right track. Yeah. Um, because the, the the two main there's two main issues with with people that claim that they do a serious investigations. Uh, one is your base readings, because most of the time you see people come in there if they do base readings at all. They do them quickly. They do them the first part of the, 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 a lot of time, which maybe, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 minutes, maybe. Yeah. And that alone is invalid. It, it's inadequate, like to the max. You, you have to understand that if you're trying to get a base reading of the environmental conditions for a location, you need to do it under all possible conditions, which Correct. means at minimum, at minimum, you need to monitor that place 24-7 for a year Yeah. before you do anything else Absolutely. to say, oh, this might be an anomaly. Because Seasonal changes, you know, weather changes, yeah. EMF changes, everything Equipment, in the environment. Trains, surges in the, in the power lines, yeah. usage, um, and, and temperature changes. Uh, all there's so people, amount yeah. of people and traffic that comes through a location. There mm -hmm. are so many conditions, so many variables, and that's what you you were meant uh, touching yeah. on. There's so many variables to consider that you have to you have to do this at least for a year just to get the base reading. I mean, your 20 minute base reading. Sorry to be blunt, doesn't mean shit. It yeah. really doesn't, because uh, it, it, you're really not comparing it to anything. Because 25 minutes. Uh, into it, like you do your base reading for 20 minutes, five minutes later, there might be a surge in your, the electrical lines. That's normal because maybe your compressor and your, and your heater kicked on yeah. and you had a dip and then you had a surge when it cycled that because it's out of sync with the, uh, the 60 uh, Hertz mains. Um, yeah. So if it's out of sync, you're going to get that dip and surge. That's going to come up on EMF meters. You're not going to know where it's coming from. Let me ask about one of the fun pieces of equipment out there recently. What's your, if you've dug into it, what are your findings on like the SLS camera? <laughs> oh, I've dug into this thing. <laughs> oh, goody. Let's hear. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, well, I have camera. my opinion. I'm not a big fan of them. So, oh, I think we're probably going to agree we'll like this. Um, the SLS camera is the Xbox Connect. Let's make that yeah. clear. Yep. It's, it's a game peripheral. That That's what it is. It's designed for video games. Um, it has a lot of flaws and the flaws are that it, it's looking at for human figures, but it can't really see the human figures. It's looking at it and it's judging the area. First of all, all right. So by Microsoft instructions per Microsoft, when you set this up, you're supposed to have a 10 by 10, to 12 by 12 area clear of furniture. Nothing is supposed to be in that area. So guarantee 95 to 99% of <laughs> investigations already break that rule. 100%. Most of the time, that's, it's what? It's on a handle. It's got a tablet. People are walking around with it. And you're going room to room. You're seeing everything. Again, you're, also, you're not supposed to move it around. There's a reason when you turn on the Xbox, the Kinect would always go up and down. It's looking at the room. And it's supposed to be stationary. So it knows... When something moves into the scene, if you're constantly moving the connect around, everything is moving to that yeah. software. Mm. So okay. everything's coming in. So if you have a chair, if you have a, a backpack, if you have the, the end of a sofa, if you have cushions on the, on the sofa that are positioned a certain way, 
yes, it's going to pick it up and think it's a figure. Um, I've gone around. I did it. I did an article on this where I really went into the a deep dive of development and the software and how it reacts to the environment. And I also did a video um, where I demonstrated just in my basement with with a ceiling fan and book bags and chairs and trash bags, um, all kinds of stuff that it picked up and assigned a stick figure. Does this thing pick up ghosts? No, there's absolutely nothing that says it does. Yeah, there's it's no sound sensor for it to pick up on, anyways. It's going to see stuff and say, "Hey, you know what? This kind of looks like a figure." And remember, like this is Microsoft went out, went into people's homes, and they watched people of all shapes and sizes, from children to adults, big, skinny, tall, whatever, and and. They 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 base the software off of those movements. They put them in um, the motion tracking and they track the movements. They base the software on that. But the software is always all also designed to make guesses, because just you guys are, are watching me just like the, the the camera of the Kinect. So if I'm a game player, and one of the most common games for that system was a dancing game. So if I'm sitting here, if I'm standing here dancing and I go like this, what happens? This arm disappears. It can't see it anymore. So the software has to make a guess and say, all right, where is that arm? Where is that other leg? Because that one leg is behind the other one. Now I have to make yeah. a guess. So when you see these, these random stick figures pop up, they're not standing still. They're always jittery. Yeah. They usually look like a mutated alien, um, for one. And then they're always jittery. They're always popping around because it, the software is not sure. It's like, I don't know where the arm is. I think it, it's supposed to go here, Yeah. but I don't see an arm. So I'm going to put it there and I'm going to move it around a little bit and we'll see what happens. But then when you move the camera itself a few inches, it disappears. The ghost didn't disappear. It, yeah. it, it got a better look. Yeah, one of the things that we noticed, because my kids had that thing, you know, it was like, oh, let's get this thing for the kid. Well, my grandmother was like, oh, I'm going to get this thing for the kids. My kids loved it for, I don't know, like a month. And I was like, man, I got to move. Great. just want to sit there with the control on my head. But a lot of times, like, the kids, they'll just be standing there, and it'll it'll pick them up, and if their little avatars are in game. And then all of a sudden, they, like, get disfigured and, and like, arms, like, in places it shouldn't right. be. And then I see people who use this for investigating, and they're like, oh, what's going on? It's like morphing into something else. Um, you know, oh, it's like, is it is it trying to materialize? What you know? And it's like, no, it's, right. that's a glitch. Like, let's... You also have the, the examples where people are like, look, you know, I, this, this anomaly <laughs> was there. This entity is there. And I went over to it and asked it to, to you know, grab my hand, to hold my hand. And you'll see, like, the stick figure kind of go like this. Yeah. Well, if you actually took the time, and I'm not picking on you guys. I'm saying, in general, if people took the time to actually set this up and play with it, and you get it set up on something that where it assigns a stick figure maybe to, like, a chair, and you walk over to it, it is common for you to stick out your hand. It will try to jump to you because it's looking at distances. At this point, it's not looking at just individual figures. It's saying, you're the same distance away from the camera as this chair is. Maybe you're part of this figure. And therefore, it's trying to stretch out where it thinks the arm is and now yeah. apply it to your arm because you're the same distance away. It's It really gets complicated. I mean, this is more than just like a, a five-minute explanation. Um, sure. But I mean, there's a mode, if you download the software, uh, from Microsoft, and you can still do that. It's free. You can download it. it. It's open source. So that's why, that's what bugs me when you when people pay like five, six, seven hundred dollars for that SLS system. First of all, I think they're committing a felony. Um, not the buyer, <laughs> but the seller, because sure. open so open sourced software from Microsoft. You can't sell it. You're not supposed to be selling it. Yeah, but they do anyway under the yeah. guise of well, we changed the framing and stuff like that, and we're selling the system, not the software. Bu bullshit. Um, but you're not supposed to do that. But if you download the software onto your laptop and you plug in the Xbox to your or the Connect to your laptop, which this is what I do, um, 
and then shine it around, point it around. You can play with it and you can see how two stick figures will interact. At first, they the stick figures try to stay away from each other. The software tries to keep them apart, mm-hmm. but the closer you get, they're going to combine. That's okay. just what it does. So, yeah, I don't it's not a ghost hunting tool. It's not an investigation tool. It's certainly not an accurate, any kind of tool except for a game uh, tool. That's all it is. Under yeah. proper use, I believe um, it has been said that it only works like 70 some odd percent of the time. Anyway, it's yeah. under, under the normal circumstances. So as a game tool, is that what you're as saying? Game, yeah. As a yeah, game. Okay. Yeah. That's because most, most households don't have, a, a 12 by 12 area that they can clear all the furniture out. Correct. You know, so you're going to have all these other interferences, um, tables and chairs and, and couches and, you know, mom walking through where you're yeah, trying to do yeah. your dance party, you know, and go, mom, get out of the way. <laughs> but <laughs> gotcha. you know, that's just the way it is. And you're, it's going to pick up plants and, and like uh, my book bag, my, my actually my laptop bag, it picked that up all the time um, to the point where I could, if I put my bag, I think I have a video of this, um, my laptop bag on a chair, it assigned a stick figure to it. And then I went over, picked up the bag and I lifted it up like this. And the stick figure is going up and down. Mm. With the <laughs> bag. And I'm like, Oh, look. And I turned the bag around and it just moved around. I mean, and that's what you need to do. And that's what I encourage people to do. If you really think your connect is picking up ghosts, then stay at home where, you know, as long as you don't think your house is haunted, stay at home, turn it on, and walk around your house. Play with it. That's what you need to do. You need to play with this equipment and test it out. See what affects it. See what doesn't affect it. See if you can manipulate it. Try to manipulate it. Yeah. That's how you start to understand how to use it and how it works. And you'll be better off if you are if you insist on taking it out to a haunted location. Some haunted. Um then you'll at least you'll be better prepared to work with it. Another piece of equipment I want to ask you about. Uh, so a motion, you know, motion sensor that they've attached a, you know, little old school um, music box thing to. You're in a room, you aim it towards a wall or a portion of the room, nobody's in, there's no movement that you know of. What's causing that to go off randomly? Have you oh. done anything with that? I've played with a, with them a little bit. Um, that's the good thing about attending conferences because most people have these for sale and you can just play with them. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't go in going, hey, I'm the token skeptic. I'm going to look at your equipment. No, yeah, you can yeah. just walk up and you start playing with it and say, what does this do? What does this do? So you get to play. Um, it depends on the sensor that they're using. And most of the time, that it, most of what I found, they're using the cheap sensors that, Uh, are used for like Halloween decorations. Mm -hmm. That's what they're using. Um, And they're, they're, you can set them off with a UV light, infrared light. um, Because that's something to consider because it's not just visible light that's doing it. It's not always temperature sensor. Yeah. It's motion sensing. And depending on if it's passive or active. So if it's (laughs) passive, I think it looks at the environment as like blocks and it sees hot and cold. And if anything changes at all, um, and it doesn't actually have to be like a, a big increase or even heat itself. If you shine a flashlight into the room, it makes it go off. Okay. And again, UV light and IR lights. Oh, we lost one. Brian um, said he's had enough of your shit. He's out. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, right, I'm going to go play with my SLS camera. Screw this guy. There he is. There he is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> we figured That's you'd really go to play with your SLS camera. And just no, I don't know what that is. I'm, sit, I'm sitting here looking at and You guys said I was gone and I was still here and then, and then I wasn't. I don't know. That's Guess what's what I get for asking those questions. You know, um, Kenny, I, I I noticed something over your shoulder there that I think all of us in the field should take to heart and, and always remember. You got a sign over your shoulder that says never stop learning. Yes. And I, I, I think there's too much of us in the field that don't take that to heart. That is my mantra. I mean, that's something I live by. I close out all my shows with that. It, it's just you, you have to there's a there's a a uh, psychological thing called the Dunning Kruger effect. And it's basically the idea is that the less, you know, the more confident you are in how much, you know, um, and then the more, you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and that's, 
it's a good philosophy to understand because, you know, like you do start reading. If you keep reading, keep learning stuff, you start to realize like, holy shit, there is so much knowledge out there. No idea how much is involved. And I mean, we touched on base readings and just some of the equipment that are used. And I mean, those are rabbit holes. It's not what you just see on TV where they turn on their K2 meter and just walk around. They're like, oh, look, it blinks. Therefore, something's over here. There's so much more. You have to understand electromagnetic fields. You have to understand field strength. What the fuck is a milligauss? You know, who can tell me that? I mean, it's a measurement. I understand it. But I mean, if you're a ghost hunter, if you're into that stuff, ask yourself, do you know what a milligauss is? Can you can you define it? And, and that's the important thing. If you can't in define something, then you don't understand it. So maybe you should go get a book or look it up. Google it. I'm not being mean. I'm just saying right. you need to learn. No, you're this. being truthful, and the, the field needs a lot more of that. It really does. Yeah. I mean, right. if, if I come across something, if you guys ask me a question and I don't, I don't know, I, I'm more than willing to say I don't know. But I'm going to write it down on my notepad. And I'm going to look it up after the show, <laughs> you know, like, cause that I want to know, I want to know yeah. what you were talking about. And, yeah. and I think everyone should have that thirst. You can't just watch TV shows and think, you know, enough. If you say, if you ever have that, that thought in your head, I know enough. You don't, you, you just don't because enough is never enough. There's always more out there. There's always someone that knows more than you. There's always someone that knows different than you. So keep learning. I mean, I, I, even though I go to paranormal conferences and I try to f figure out what they're doing, what people are doing, what the latest trends are, this and that, I'm still listening to what they're, what they're saying, how they're building equipment, why are they building equipment, what they look for, how they analyze photographs, because maybe somebody knows something I don't, you know, and I can learn something from them. But I also go to photography events. I also, whoa. whoa. Who's doing that? Wow. A little notice, please. I get motion sickness. <laughs> yeah, you know what? The, for some reason, these uh, boxes, when people ask yeah. questions and I throw them up there, man, it covers everybody's face. And I'm like, well, that's kind of okay. hard. Well, nobody wants to see my face anyways. Yeah, yeah but that's cool. <laughs> uh, what's this, right, what John? Is... With you, he might believe, but then he'd be more willing to believe he was hallucinating because that's a better explanation. Would it take, what would, con oh, I guess, what would it take to convince you? Let me see. I have the comments up. There we go. So what would it take to convince you ghosts exist? I would love, I mean, hallucination. I mean, that's probably not the first thing I would go for. Um, because when people see things, uh, the first thing I ask for is like, what kind of environment are we talking? You know, what are the conditions? Um, were you drunk? Were you high? Were you tired? You know, are we talking like three o'clock in the morning when this happened? And you usually go to bed at eight um, or nine. That's a big thing big uh, factor there but for for me to be convinced that a ghost exists i would like one to pop up right next to me you know or you know just anywhere i'm out on an investigation i'm looking into something <clears throat> the apparition pop up in front of me and go hey bitch i'm a ghost <laughs> yeah. like, me, I'm, hey, I'm yes. to the point now i want something thrown at me i want to see something levitate across the room i don't want a, something that I heard it land on the ground and I looked over and well, did it fall off the shelf? Did it get thrown? I want to see it get picked up off the table and thrown at me. And I would I, like to add to that. If I'm standing next to you, can it please give me a heads up to move out of the way? <laughs> um, so Gary and I did witness something and we didn't realize what we witnessed until after. And that was seeing um, a doppelganger. And we do know um the person that we've seen there, there was just no time whatsoever for the person to come in go past us and then 30 seconds later be outside Going from behind you again right it, there's just no way um <clears throat> i have gary doesn't either although i'll just speak for myself but we have no explanation for that like i don't know what the hell happened I know what I've seen. He's seen the same thing. Like that even 30 seconds later. Here's the guy we've seen. Now, when Gary and I came in, 
we were the first to go in, watch the guy walk past us, go down this long ass tunnel. That was it, whatever. Everybody else piles in. Oh, hey, there's somebody down there flashing the lights. There's nobody down there. Gary's like, yeah, you know, this guy went down there. Now he's outside. He's outside. He walks in. No, what do you want? You know, I've been out here. I I have tried to come up with an explanation for that, and I cannot for the life of me, unless Gary and I went like crazy for about 10 seconds. We didn't even communicate with one another. Like we literally didn't even say anything. So we saw whatever, it's this dude. And then it, come to find out it wasn't. Could there be some? Could there be some kind of some explanation of some sort for things like that to happen? Because it hasn't. I mean, this happens to other people as well. So I don't know. Maybe you might have an idea as to maybe what was could have been experienced. I know you weren't there. That's that's the problem. I, I wasn't there, and when you relate anecdotes like that. Um, details are not always accurate. Uh, I, I mean, there's there's a lot of information, um, and if, you, if you're up for it, I suggest you pick up some books by Elizabeth Loftus. Um, she's the world's foremost expert on memory, um, and we suck at remembering things. So I whenever I, and I'm not going to pick on you, but whenever I hear the phrase, I know what I saw or I know what I've seen. Right my first initial gut reaction is no, you really didn't um, because we all have that problem. Things happen when things happen like that, when you're not expecting it, expecting it to happen, you're not prepared for it. You're not paying attention to all the details. So time is different. Time moves slow or fast. It's all perspective. Was there enough time for that person to get out? I don't know. You know, like you guys don't think, but you're you're thinking retroactively. You're thinking back to that after that. So maybe there was time, maybe there wasn't. I don't know, because again, I wasn't there. These details are coming from you guys from your perspective. So there might be other variables that we don't know about. There might be something else. I I, I don't know. Anything that I would say would be speculation. Um, no, that's I would, fair. If you have video that we could look at, then maybe we could get a better idea I didn't hit record sure. I thought about it and so, I was like ah, I'm 4k 64 gig card yeah I and, and I get what you're saying you know yeah. police say all the time when well tell me what you saw and then what actually was seen was you know generally the same thing but there were a lot of specifics that were missed and right. I certainly respect your viewpoint and again I, I consider myself a skeptic I I can't for the life of me the there, I, I, I know you weren't there, but I can tell you there's no physical way for the person to have gotten out of the building. There's just no way. Not in 30 seconds. It's a it's a quarter mile down. If he were to run, it's an echo chamber in there. You would hear it. Right. Yeah, and this dude, um, yeah, and, and there was there were strange details about it that we both. It, I, I said so. And, and it looked like and then he finished my sentence, which was exactly what I saw. Right. Like I didn't say it. And then he just right. agreed with me. I said and then and he said something like. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just going to say. So I, 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 I'm not saying yeah, it's 100 percent proof it's a ghost because we didn't catch it. Well, but I, factors, I can say I was there and I can confirm the guy they saw was outside where I was at the whole time. Yeah. So I, I just that's, I, that's the stuff that so when, when people say and I respect everyone's right to you know say I, I don't believe it. There's not enough proof for, for me personally. And I get that. But then I say, OK, well, then what is that? And then unfortunately, most people can't give you an explanation. Yeah. And so then that's where I struggle with, okay, well, right. did I see what I see? If it was just me, I totally get what you said. I misinterpreted something. But when <laughs> someone else is there and they're recounting the exact same thing you saw without you having told them that, I, I mean, I guess that could be a trick well, of the mind. But there's, there's a couple things with that. Um, one, um, I mean, I'm just writing Master notes down so I remember. Um, so like you mentioned, uh, 30 seconds and a quarter mile. Yeah. Uh, so those are those are exact predictions. Um, and those are something I would question. Like, was it actually 30 seconds? Is it a quarter mile away? Like for me, that would be the first thing I would do. I mean, I yeah. couldn't measure the time because sure. that's that's relative. That's relative to you. Yeah. I mean, 30 seconds is 
that's a long time. It right. could be only five seconds. It could be a minute. It could be more. A quarter okay. mile, a quarter mile, we can measure. We can actually measure. And that's one thing I would do. Because, uh, I mean, distances, when people try to estimate distances, they always get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Sure. Always. Because we don't know. Unless we have an object that we know exactly how big it is or, or okay. exact size, we can usually tell kind of a distance, but we can't tell how far away things are, how close things. We always get it wrong. Right. Sure. Um, and then with, with eyewitness testimony, one of the first things I do is separate people as soon as possible. Because if in this instance, in this example that you're giving, you guys were both there. You guys started talking and finishing each other's sentence. Like that's what, that's what you mentioned. He Mm -hmm. finished your sentence. So that's actually bad. Um, that's, that's a bad thing to do because you want to separate the witnesses and get the stories from them separately and then compare them because when you're together, sure. There's this, uh, common, uh, 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 process of meshing the stories together. Like your perspective, what you saw could be slightly different, but when you start describing, you're using okay. each other's words and stuff. I mean, if, think about this. If you see something, so Gary, you see something mm-hmm. and you try to describe it to everyone else, you can describe it as much detail as possible. But in the end, none of us are going to know exactly what you saw. Okay. Because sure. there's just no way to do it because it's your perspective. You okay. know, your what your filters, your biases, whatever is going to filter out that what you saw. So there's no way for us to know. But when you get two, three, four people more together, they start meshing their comments. They're they're filling in the gaps um, of missing information. Okay. And it becomes part of their own stories. So okay. there's that issue. Again, this is all speculation and just talking sure. because again, I wasn't no, what, what you're, what you're saying wanted. is making sense, right? My only comeback to that would be, or question on that would be, he and I saw this person inside the building. Brian saw him outside, never go in the building. There's no explanation for that, right? No logical explanation for that. I don't see it. We're, and we're and getting, I get it. You weren't there. Way I, out. Just, I don't know the lay of land. I don't know the building. I don't know everyone else that was there. There's sure. I don't know anything about this. I um, got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not trying to be argumentative. Off. Just oh, it's I'm okay. searching for an answer. And so you're I a smart guy, yeah. and you have a lot of interesting ideas that I certainly uh, subscribe to. And, and like I said, I consider myself a skeptic. So when when you consider yourself a skeptic, and something like that happens, you're like, all right, let's run through what could this be. Right. And then and you get people way. Yeah. corroborating it outside going, yeah, that guy never went in the building. So whatever we saw, whether Joe and I were finishing each other's sentences or not, we both saw this guy inside. And yet Brian and other witnesses said he never went in the building. That's what so I'm struggling with. That for me, I would say we need to be there. Got and it. If, if there was a, a return visit and I was able to attend, that would be what I would spend my time on. Okay. We would go to that specific area. We'd recreate it as best we can from you guys' memories. Okay. And say, all right, what what are we looking at here? How can okay. we recreate this? How can we do this? Let's try to make this happen and then go from there. You know, I'm thinking, boys, we need to do a return visit and bring Kenny with us. Well, I was going to, you know, say, I also want to up for that. I also want to throw out there for added information and data for Kenny. These guys also finish each other's sandwiches and candy bars. And I'm not even really sure what that means. I'm not sure what the problem with that is, sir. <laughs> if you're hungry, you're hungry. And right. they share diabetes together, apparently, because Joe's going That's blind. That's true. Happens at a haunted location and stays at a haunted yeah. location. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, pr- I appreciate your perspective on that, Kenny. I really do. And like I said, I would not be opposed to somewhere in the future setting it up. And then just getting your perspective after you've been there and seen the land, of, you know, the, the layout and everything. Yeah. And just may- maybe find a more concrete... I would like to think that it, there is a logical explanation for it, right? I, I, I mean, just there, I don't know what it is. <laughs> there always is. There always is. It's just the 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 roadblock to finding that solution is information. If you have a lack of information, you're you can't get to that conclusion, um, or at least the the solid rock solid conclusion. Sure. Uh, right now, all we can say is I don't know. Got that, it. That's really it. I mean, you, you yeah, guys saw that's something fair. and yeah. you have an idea, but we don't have enough evidence to support that idea. Okay. We, and, and, and 
I mean, that, that's where we leave it until we can get more information. Right. Sure. And I brought that I brought that up because I've had somebody say, well, you know, so and so we've seen this and da 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 da, you know, like Gary and I. But it, um, again, as you said, our memories suck. And that's like when something happens and the police have to be involved, they look for as many witnesses as possible because even they know people's stories are going to vary from one another. You know, right. like, oh, oh yeah. this guy was wearing a red hat. Somebody will say, no, nah, it was a blue yeah. hat. Right. So well, look, look at the TV show like The Dead Files. They use a different police sketch artist or a different artist every week. And it's the same person recounting what she saw. And yet those pictures look vastly different. So to Kenny's point, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody I mean, sees stuff differently. We, we have so many biases. We have we, we don't pay attention as much as we think. I mean, who who has walked into the kitchen for something and totally forgot? What they were going in there for? Oh yeah, I mean, right there. who who has has read a, a passage or read something to take notes and then totally forgot what they were supposed to write down and had to read the page again? I mean, this is something that happens, and yeah. when something happens suddenly, when it's really quick, you're not expecting it. You are not paying attention to everything. You are reacting, no, and that's I would totally agree with you. We were not. Oh hey, all right. What's our environment doing? He was putting right. his gear down. I was putting my gear down. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with that statement. Absolutely. Yeah. For all they know, it was actually a Bigfoot that walked past them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, I only know. hairy person in that building was me, sir. Thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> hey, so, so something in the, you know, and that, so in that wheelhouse, staying in that vein, can, taking into consideration all the stuff that's out there commonly, whether it be um, a spirit box, an ovulus, using a flashlight, a K2 meter, anything you can you know, the typical standard, the yes to no questions when they're getting what they feel we feel is pretty direct. Yes or no questions and interaction out of these devices. Is that just, in your opinion, just complete randomness? And we're trying to piece those, pu the, those pieces together to make them fit into a puzzle that maybe not there. <sighs> That's a good question. Um, so it, it depends on the piece of equipment because Every piece has different uh, things that can manipulate it. Mm -hmm. um, so you can also have low batteries, which will make a lot of the equipment go off. Yeah, I know. Completely. Grand pods are bad yeah. about that. Um, yeah. But there is a habit of of groups going in and, and setting up a piece of equipment and <clears> asking <throat> questions over and over again. Like asking the same question three, four, five times until – they get something. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not, that's not having a conversation that is making sure that you get the response that you want. Um, Correct. And, and that's just, that's wrong. You're deceiving yourself um, and everyone else when you tell somebody you got a response. Um, so I think it, sometimes it's random. Yeah. Uh, it's uncontrolled environment. That's what it really comes down to. Um, when you have something like a, a REM pod or a K2 meter, EMF meter, whatever, if you're just laying it out in the open uh, on a table or a chair or on the floor, what what's to stop anything from manipulating that? What's to stop someone from downstairs using a, a, their, their two-way radio? What's to – maybe they turn a switch on. Maybe there's somebody else, houses down in on the same block using yeah, two-way radio. Yeah, cops sitting in the parking lot or nearby with a, with a radio. You need to control the environment. And in these cases – the, some of the best ways to do it is to put those devices in a Faraday box, like a well-constructed Faraday box, mm -hmm. not this bullshit that you get on Amazon, like the bags, they don't work um, because you need, you need to block AM, FM, CB, uh, shortwave radio and AM signals are so, so tiny. Um, most of these bags don't block it at all. So you're still going to get signals through. Um, so, <laughs> What? I'm sorry. I mean, I, there was a question in the comments that I'm trying to figure out what exactly is being asked. All right, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to John's and then we'll get to the other. Okay. Kevin's all right. Yeah. I, the just, next one. Like, like what the? Heck? I'll say okay. what about them? <laughs> yeah. Okay. If, if it's the we'll one I'm looking at, I, I yeah. know, we know what they're talking about. Okay. All right. So we'll get to that then here. In a we've little bit. we've seen them in use before, Gary. Up at the speakeasy. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. That's not the cat balls I was thinking of. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my bad. Oh Lord. Yeah. We get this question uh, from John. Okay. Skeptics. <laughs> if ghost hunting's a fool's errand, 
Uh, how do you explain the documentary series Ghostbusters? <laughs> I explain it as everything I learned about the paranormal I learned from Peter Venkman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ghostbusters. I mean, that's set off so much. I mean, that that is more than just a pop culture icon. It, it's it's just that is the the that's the turning point for ghost hunters. That is the turning point where the people that love this this kind of hobby and are interested in all things paranormal realized that, hey, we can use a meter. We can measure ghosts. You know, they don't have a PKA meter. I mean, I do, but they don't use it. They can find other meters that beep and light up. And I mean, that's, we can trace so much back to Ghostbusters and, and, and the mentality of, oh, look, if it lights up and it reads some kind of invisible field, yeah, it's going to tell us there's ghosts around here. And it's, it's good and bad. It's good because it's such a great movie. I freaking love that movie. I watch it all the time. Um, <laughs> I have the shit around in my office. Like, uh, wait, there, yeah. it, there he is. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> And I have I have stuff back here. I have Ecto One up there. That's my nice. popcorn holder. Nice. Love it. Um, but it just it springboarded the the amateur ghost hunter into thinking that just because they have gadgets that they're being scientific, and they're I, it's so far from the truth. Right. Um, just because I have frying pans doesn't make me a chef. <laughs> right. Right. You know. I, I mean, I have a bunch of equipment all around me, and. This doesn't mean I'm a, a, a podcaster. It doesn't mean um, I'm a filmmaker. I mean, I, I do both, but I can have a microphone and a, and a mixer in front of me. And I just, I want to be on a podcast. You know, I can be a guest. It doesn't mean I'm a podcaster. I can have a video camera. It doesn't mean I'm a filmmaker. You know, and just because you have a gadget that lights up and beeps doesn't mean you're a ghost hunter. There you yeah. go. And again, yeah. I'm not trying to be insulting, but honestly think about what you're doing think about why you're doing it think about do you really know what you're doing and be honest with yourself and when you realize that you don't know what you're doing read a book not Very by a ghost hunter. not by a ghost hunter either right <laughs> hey i, I want to um address uh christina i know she can't interact or whatever but i just wanted to know that what she said was accurate the cat ball thanks christina you're absolutely right that's what we call them it's the four of us might be slightly immature and seeing the phrase, what about cat balls? We find that funny because we're immature, but uh, you're absolutely had, correct with what you called them. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, nothing on your end. I, I have had multiple concussions, so it's, it's up here. It's not what you <laughs> said, but my, I can speak for myself. I'm immature. I will, it could say dog balls, donkey balls, <laughs> any kind of balls. And I'm going to laugh. <laughs> balls in general is just a funny word. Yes, yeah. but I, I, I believe uh, Mr. Biddle over here did a thing on uh, cat balls. I did. <laughs> oh, I did. Okay. Um, so I, I was approached, and it, this is actually a great thing. Um, most of the, the the leads I get for my articles come from paranormal people. Um, it doesn't come from skeptics or scientists. It comes from ghost hunters and and other enthusiasts like that because they're curious and they want to know. So. A while back, I, I was uh, I, I got a message from a ghost hunter saying, "Hey, you know, if you're interested, take a look at this. This person is selling um, these these light spheres, and they're they're they look like cat toys. And what was being sold was was this vibration activated light sphere. Um, and this is a paranormal research device. It says so on the top. Talk right with there. Us, Gary. Yeah." Uh oh. Um, his camera's just off. Uh, no, his microphone's off too. He's got to pee. Yeah. That's what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, he's peeing. <laughs> he thinks he's clever. Eh, we know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. So, these were being sold and they were marketed directly to ghost hunters and they were being sold, I think, for like $12 or $13 each. Um, and they light up. I mean, yeah, look, they light up pretty, yeah. you know, really cool. And they do look like a cat toy. In fact, they actually look like this cat toy. Um, same package, except the card is different. So I looked into it, and I, <laughs> the person that was selling them, and I, I know you guys don't like mentioning names, so, 
but the person you, you go you mean you go for it i mean you're the guest so <laughs> if it's us, uh, no, it's, it's, it's cool it's cool i mean if you want to find out more definitely go on skepticalinquire.org you can look up my name kenny biddle and my articles are there you can find it there um but basically i tracked down the guy that was selling this and i tracked down the manufacturer of this and this same manufacturer and i actually found his purchase order for these um, and the big thing was that he was selling them as upgraded. So it had like an upgraded uh, battery, an upgraded um, uh, sensor in it, and all this stuff. I checked with the manufacturer. No such upgrades were made. They are sold for, you could actually buy them, I think, for like four or five cents each. Wow. Um, when you buy them in bulk. So you yeah, had to buy yeah. like a hundred, um, something like that. And you can buy them in stores. You can buy this in stores for three dollars, and wow. selling them for twelve or thirteen dollars. That goes back to the expert in making money. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, that was a big ripoff. Um, and they were they're cheap toys. They're cat toys. You can put them on the floor, and if you walk across it, or if there's any friction at all, um, any kind of vibration whatsoever, it'll make it light up. Because right. it's basically what's inside is a, a tiny BB. Mm. It's a very tiny BB and it's between two metal plates. And any movement of that ball will make contact with the other plate and cause it to light up. Um, gotcha. So very cheap. I mean, when, when you can sell it or when you can buy it for like four cents for each, you got to know that it's cheap. <laughs> it's yeah, cheap yeah. Um, this right. is not high tech equipment. It's not accurate. It's not scientific whatsoever. Um, and I did a test where I put a whole bunch. I did, I actually bought like three of these things, the ghost hunter ones. And I bought like a dozen of these and I had them all out on the floor all together. And my, I mean, my dog, my dog, which is only like 12 pounds, walked across the floor, made it go off, made them all go off. No difference. Just randomly going off. Um, but it's not, it's not a ghost hunting tool. It's a it, big deal. It's a vibration tool at best. Right? Yeah. But anything, you know, anything, a truck going on the road outside will make them go off. Yeah, sound vibration, you know, which is the one we all tend to potentially look past that environmental, like I said, a truck, even our voices. If we got somebody with a little bit deeper voice, that vibration absolutely will bounce off of that and set it off. Ed will set off some cat balls. Right. He will. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she, Katrina it follows up about, like, what if there's... Uh, if it goes off when someone isn't in the room. And again, like we were mentioning, it doesn't have to be in a room. No. Uh, anything outside, you could be walking upstairs and you have to understand any kind of vibration at all. And vibration is caused by contact. When you walk across the floor, you're causing a vibration. Mm -hmm. Vibration doesn't just stop unless you have vibration dampening material, which houses don't. You, you're going to transfer that vibration through the ceiling, through the floor, through the walls. Yeah. Um, same with sound. Sound is vibration. It's vibration of air. And it goes through that. That's the medium it travels through that we hear. But it also travels through the glass, the walls, um, wood, plastic, metal, whatever. It's going to travel through that. It gets weaker or stronger. Well, mostly weaker, but it's still going to transfer. And if it's on a table or if it's on a floor, this thing can go off. And, and again, also with batteries, it's got little batteries in it. If yeah. they start going dead, it's going to go off. Yeah. <clears throat> so, gotcha. yeah, cat balls, I think, not a good I thing. think what I'd like to say, though, is if you enjoy playing with cat balls, don't let our discussion distract you from that. As long as <laughs> you, you do you, mind, then I guess go yep. ahead. You do you. Hey, Kenny, I asked you earlier where you weighed in on ghosts. And then I think in the course of that conversation, you kind of mentioned the other two pillars of the paranormal, that being cryptids and, and aliens or UFOs. Where do you weigh in on those other two? So those are also big topics. <laughs> um, okay. Big topics. So cryptids, I mean, cryptids are, uh, they're unusual mythical kind of creatures that haven't been discovered yet. Um, that's, that's a very short definition of, of cryptid, but you have your, your famous one is like a Bigfoot, Chupacabra. Um, 
these ones. Chupacabra is, is one that I, I know pretty well. The research has been done with that. And that is actually traced back. The stories traced back to 1995 when the, uh, the movie Species came out. The first ah. writing, the first story, the first witness was a woman in Puerto Rico that right. went to see that movie. And she was a big movie buff and then had her alleged sighting. And oh, the first yeah. description of it, if you look it's at it. It's like the, a big bug thing, yeah, it, versus it's the main spikes coyote. On the back. When you look at yeah. the first illustration and compare it with the movie, the spe- the, the monster from the species, the movie, it's that's where you got it from. Um, Got it. And then, I mean, modern day sightings are mostly uh, uh, canines with uh, some yeah. kind of mange or, or something like yeah. that where they're lost gotcha. all their hair. Um, Bigfoot. <clears throat> no, I, I don't. Uh, not just because I think the Patterson Gimlin film was a guy in a suit. But when you get down to the science of it, the biology of it, there's just not for for an adequate breeding population to sustain over all these decades we would have seen them by now that you can't have just one covering 200 miles and and you know, oh yeah yeah absolutely 200 yeah. square miles you have to have a, a really good high population um and i think i forget that the rule um to avoid inbreeding this is i i'm not i'm not prepared for someone that. quoted like a 1500 at least to to you know i think it's more than that. have the population die out and or Stuff like that, but you a minimum wanna, of fifteen. You want to uh, genetic inbreeding. You want to avoid that, so you have to have a certain amount in that species to continue that species or to grow that species. And I, I, I do the the number escapes me right now. I don't remember it, but you can look that up. Gotcha. Um, and sure. it's it's a lot. It's a lot more than what you would expect. Um, when it comes so, to aliens, so, go ahead. Yeah, as I said, just we back up to Bigfoot for a minute. So when when they're finding these tracks, and then they're analyzed by someone, but like Dr. Jeff Meldrum, who's supposed to be you know a, a foot anatomy specialist. I know that's not the correct term for his doctorate, but and he says, oh yeah, there's all these dermal ridges and that. You think that's all just faked, or because he seems we we've had him on our show in the past, seemed like a very credible dude, and certainly risks his uh, reputation a lot by, by going to bat saying, yeah, it's possible these things do exist. Well, what do you think he's seeing then that makes him so convinced that they are or that they I, do exist? I don't, I don't know what he's saying. Um, okay. He is a professor from what I, I, I'm looking up, making sure I, he's a professor of anatomy and anthropology the department of biology. Yeah, I, Sciences. Idaho State, Idaho, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, with the dermal ridges, that's something that's interesting to me but um because i understand I, I know what that is i mean basically it's, it's your fingerprint or fingerprint yeah. in, this, in this case but i i haven't seen those casts i i don't know what he's looking at um so i can't touch on that too much but okay. for the examples that i have seen because i have been able to attend like bigfoot conferences um and and talk to people that actually research that the the footprints are not impressive to me um they don't look too much out of the ordinary yeah they're big but in most cases that i've experienced again this is just from what i have observed they look more like uh 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 stamps um okay like carved because i mean think about when you're in the first first and foremost when tracks are found at most i've only seen two in a row at one location. Usually they only seem to just track. disappear. Yeah, it's yeah. not you don't see where they came from, you don't see where they went. I only see one track. Occasionally there's two tracks, but that's about it. And when I have seen them, um, as they're being casted, they're flat. Yeah. They're just flat in the ground. And that's not how we walk. That's not how uh yeah. it's such a large that, that creature. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. how your weight transfers, none of that. Exactly. Exactly. They they appear very flat. And I, I mean, I have do I have, no, I don't have it here. I have it down in the basement. I actually have a um, it's a replica. It's made from a casting of the uh, Bluff Creek, um, which is uh, Bigfoot, which is the Patterson Gimlin film one. Right. And it's big, but it, again, it's flat. It looks like something just went straight down and then straight up. And that's it. Um, so I have a problem with that. Uh, I have a okay. problem with the breeding population i have a problem with bigfoot seems to be naturally blurry 
Um, that's that's I, I have a big problem. With that. You know, <laughs> we have all these they're, they're cloaked, cameras. man. Come on, well, with the high with quality me. of uh, photography out there. Yeah, and we just keep getting blurred pictures of them. I know. Yeah. Like, is everybody just bringing potatoes with them when they go off? You know, yeah, into it's the woods? so bad. It is so bad. You know, and and I mean, there's 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 a reaction. I mean, there's plenty of videos out there. You you can look at them, and some people, it's it's like almost like. <sighs> There, there are some people that should be dead, and I say that because you see the video and it's like they're, oh look, it's a Bigfoot, and they're allegedly like twenty feet away from it, and they're just like, oh look, oh that's cool, and they look yeah. away, and then they come back, and I'm, th- I'm thinking like this is, this is yeah. rumored to be like eight hundred pound bipedal primate kind of creature that will tear you apart like Chewbacca ripping off a droid's arm, like no problem whatsoever. I would not take my eyes off it. Um, I would not approach it. I mean, I probably would, <laughs> but <laughs> I, I would keep my distance, a safe distance, but I would keep my eyes on it, not like yeah. look away and just, you know, go about my business. Not gonna yeah, I can't say what I would do, but I would definitely say I wouldn't be nonchalant about it. I right? think yeah. it would go for you hunting, it, 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 it hunting you quickly. Yeah. I, would, I would definitely try to get a good solid photo or video. I fuck the photo. I, I'm going to get 4K video of it, but from a safe distance. I mean, I, and I usually carry, if I'm going out for that, I have the uh, equipment to get close enough, but, you know, and stay safe. Right. But sure. still, you want to get good video, not right. this blurry shit, you know, from miles away where it's like, whoa, look at that. Look at that black blob <laughs> going across the mountain. That's a Bigfoot. Right. No, it ain't. It's a fucking black blob. <laughs> That's right. It's nothing. Well, yeah, even, I get you. With, with the Patterson video, it's so grainy, and people are like, "Oh, you know, look, you can tell it's not a guy in a suit because this, this, and this, and this." But it's like it's grainy. Now it's digitized. That that can also um, do some really weird uh, video anomalies as well. I, I don't know. I just get be I careful, don't, Joe. <laughs> Bob Gimlin's going to come kick your ass. Be careful. I you just, know. I mean it, that that was the mistake of a lifetime because and i say that because they went out there i'm I'm, i don't believe i don't believe that video is legit that's just my opinion and i think the way they filmed it and from the distance that they filmed it and the, the medium that they were using was the perfect storm because it's just out of out of perfect detail it's just enough where you can't tell. You can look and, and try to speculate and extrapolate some some details from it, but it's just it's in that Goldilocks zone where it's never going to be solved. It, right, it's yeah, just never you. because it's and, just, and I, he didn't do it on purpose. You know, I I, I think I mean personal opinion again. You I think, think they got hoaxed? Is I that think what it you're was saying? staged. I think it was staged. Do you think they were in on it, or do you think they got hoaxed by someone else? That oh knew no, they were I think out they there were totally in on it. I, I, okay. Yeah, I think they're um, totally annoying. Because um, every you know, all the videos that we see of that is a copy from a copy from a copy from a copy from a, you know. Yeah, as far as that. I know, the original uh, print is it is gone. Yeah, um, it's something happened to it. So it's like a second or third generation is the best yeah. they've got right now. Yeah, I think the last show me and Gary seen on it, they took you know the five copies, the twenty copies, whatever and layered them over each other and tried to make the best quality they could make of it. And even then it wasn't, you know, it was still that grainy, you know, yeah. undetermined. Gotcha. Oh, well. Oh, new question. Have you ever yeah. experienced something you couldn't explain? Oh yeah. Plenty. I, I mean, I, I, there's nothing, nothing to be afraid of or embarrassed about on that. It, I mean, it goes back to what I, mentioned earlier like most of these things when you can't solve it you can't come to a good conclusion it's because of lack of information and there's plenty of times where i don't have enough information i mean we went through that tonight the experience you guys gave me i can't explain that i mean i didn't personally explain or or experience it but i can't explain that for me sometimes if you see a shadow down the hall you know you might not be able to recreate those events and there's been plenty of times when that's happened I don't call it a ghost. I call it, hey, I don't know what this is. Got it. You know, and, and I want to, somebody, I think John Guy uh, mentioned earlier about explained and unexplainable. 
you know, there, there's a big difference between those two words. Yes, sure. this this experience is unexplained. And that's that's a good use of it because it's not explained yet. We don't know it, but it's open. If you call something unexplainable, that means it can never be explained. You're yeah, trying to okay. put that idea out there that this is unexplainable. No one will ever right. explain it. And that's just... And I think the terms unexplained and paranormal get crisscrossed with each other too much, too. Just because it's unexplained doesn't mean it's paranormal. And if you believe in the paranormal, it doesn't mean it's necessarily unexplained. They're not, you know, you can't just put one, swap one in for the other all the time. Right. Right. Um, So a couple of things here. One is when when you got into basically where you're at now. At one point, you were an investigator. Were you just like a hundred percent all in? Where, where did you come from to get to where you're at now in terms of how you think of of the paranormal? Oh, uh, so like my origin kind of story of yeah. being a skeptic. So yeah, I was I was a ghost hunter uh, back in like '97 when I got married. Um, our our gift to ourselves was a computer and it was like this new kind of computer where you can get on this interwebs kind of thing and it was like holy shit we can talk to other people this is great <laughs> better, much better than the, the old uh built-in board systems um that that i grew up with but <clears throat> got on there found a local group joined it they sounded like they knew what they were doing they because they were confident and <laughs> they had all this these stories and it sounded like they had a lot of information and i grew up in a catholic catholic household so I believed everything, you know, like believing in an afterlife and angels and demons and, you know, uh, this this invisible world was second nature. That was part of my upbringing. So ghosts and monsters and aliens really wasn't a far leap from that. Right. Um, and it really interested me. So uh, after going with this, this ghost hunting group for a while, I kind of I, I started realizing like, this is supposed to be rare. Like capturing a ghost on film is rare. I remember growing up and seeing like those unexplained books, you know, in the library Mm -hmm. or in the the bookstore. And it was like the same six pictures all the time because that's, that's how rare it was supposed to be. But you get into the ghost hunting community and everyone's getting it. Everyone's getting the same stuff. Orbs. Oh God. Uh, I, <laughs> I wasn't even going to go there with you tonight, but thanks for the input. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> wait a minute. What? What's wrong with orbs? Oh, <laughs> They're very shit. pretty to look at. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Read your manual. Read your camera <laughs> manual. I know. That's what I tell people. All I right. have old manuals and I show people from like 1998 or yeah, 99. It's in there. Yeah. It's in there. It's in there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of went that way. And, and the more I, I, I thought about it the more I wanted to learn more about photography, you know, like, why are we getting this? Is this, is it possible that it's a camera defect? Is it possible that it's me? And then I started reading more, reading the camera manuals. I mean, that was a big eye opener, you know, circles of confusion. What the fuck are they? Oh, wow. Look orbs. Okay. So moving on to photographer, uh, photography, Bibles and instruction manuals and taking lessons Learning this stuff made me realize that most of these anomalies were operator error. Um, And then I got into some of the, not only the science literature on some paranormal claims, but the skeptical literature, which led me to things like Skeptical Inquirer magazine. And and that's who I write for now. So nice full circle there with me. But um, I discovered the works of like Ben Rafford, um, who is my editor now. Uh, Joe Nickel, who is a guy that he's been doing this for for longer than I've been alive. Um, but he's been investigating all kinds of claims. You're talking like 60s, 70s, the miracles and ghosts and demons and UFOs, crop circles, uh, Mayan ruins, um, the, the Nazca lines, all this kind of stuff. There's a plethora of work out there that had, I had no idea existed. And now it's all these books are behind me. And I've read through all of them. And uh, the more you learn, and it goes back to the, the principle of the more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. Yeah. And that just that just catapulted my thirst into learning more and more and more. So oh. every time I get hooked on a, a topic, 
I just, I go crazy. OCD kicks in and I just want to learn. I mean, there's been times when a simple message saying, Hey, I, I, there's a mystery here. We can't figure it out. And that leads me to be sitting here still like six o'clock in the morning. Cause I never went to sleep going, <laughs> all right, I know the answer now. I found it. I found it. Okay. I piece it all together. Um, I mean, I, there's oh my been God, a YouTube's the biggest rabbit hole in the world. Yeah, oh, shit. No you, yeah. Eight hours later and yeah, holy shit, how deep you can go down them holes. Yeah. Well, I certainly have learned one thing from you tonight. Going forward, I will not use the term orb anymore. They will be circles of confusion. <laughs> yeah. And nor will I play with cat balls anymore. No, no cat balls <laughs> and circles of confusion. Um, Kenny, I've got kind of an outside the box question we ask it of all of our guests if hollywood were to come to you tomorrow and said hey we want to make your life story into a movie and you have a hundred percent editorial control of it who plays you in the movie wow um wow shit i don't know is that the is mini me still he's dead yeah, he, it don't matter. They can, can, I, can, can I offer? Can I offer suggestions? They can be make believe. They can be characters animated. Can I offer a suggestion? Just in, in listening to you talk tonight, Michael sure. Rappaport. Michael Rappaport. Who's that? Who's who's? Oh, what movies? He's, he's been in a ton of obnoxious. Stuff. He is a little. No, I'm not saying Kenny's obnoxious. <laughs> oh, I can be. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, he's googling it first. Oh, we got one stuff. that says Alec Baldwin. Have you shot anyone recently? <laughs> <laughs> he's oh, just shot he's down people's he's... beliefs. He was yeah. um oh yeah, I know who he is. Okay. That's just that's just who I, I see he is. That's just really? my opinion. You see me as him? I don't know. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I mean I I honestly Hollywood calls, <laughs> I'd probably hang up. <laughs> <laughs> that's an acceptable yeah, answer as well. And, and and then the fail safe answer is Denzel Washington. Cause no matter who Dude, our he, guest is good. guy, female, doesn't matter. It's Denzel Washington. Oh, I, then I, I, you know what? I go with Morgan Freeman. Ooh, go. good Ooh, call. You know? Yeah. Just cause it, just the way, like you, you say something out of line and his look matched yes. with his voice be like, yes. Oh, well, not to mention him you. narrating your your explanations or stories or whatever. That would be you know, cool. how could you not enjoy that? That would be yep. badass. Absolutely. Or or James Earl Jones. Ooh, Darth That's Vader. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Darth yeah. Vader talking about my life. That <laughs> that would be cool. no, honestly, I mean, Hollywood, there's been several times that uh, uh, production companies have called and said, hey, you know, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. And I've talked to them a little bit, but then ultimately, I, I, well, I usually refuse. I, I always thought a good idea for a show is uh, like paranormal caught on camera, only having actual objective people looking at these videos and not just going along with what the production company <laughs> wants them to say. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. The people are on it. They're, they're doing what they're doing. Right. But an actual, you know, have a believer, have a skeptic and someone in the middle and sit and, and look at these videos. I had to laugh because they had this paranormal expert on one of those shows and they're like, oh, you know, this person caught this on, on their, like, ring bell camera. And it's like this orb-looking thing flying around. They're like, well, you know, it's Alaska. And, you know, it's too cold for bugs. And I'm like. Not in the summer. Bugs? It's and bug central in the summer. Okay. In Alaska? Uh -huh. Yeah. No, I mean, it was winter. It was cold. And they're like, oh, it couldn't have been a bug because, you know, it's winter. There can't be bugs. And it's like. I, I paranormal caught on camera is like one of the dumbest shows I, I've seen in a long time. And I mean, I'm, I don't like any of the people that are on there. I think some of their explanation and, and that's why I hang up on Hollywood. Cause it's true. Sure. Cause, don't, cause they don't give you that opportunity. Right. right? They and want to see what it. they want to say, not what you want right. to say. There's, there's a, a, if you're interested, I don't know how much time you have, um, but there's a, there's a documentary out. It's, it's on Amazon right now. Um, it's called Science Friction. Not Science oh. Fiction, Science Friction. Yeah, yeah they just mentioned just it. Mentioned yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Brian Dunning. Yeah. Thanks, John. Uh, I know John. Um, John, uh, John Guy just put out, a, he, well, uh, his book is coming out. It's a it's on critical thinking and evaluating claims and stuff like that. It, it's going to be a great book. It's, it should be on the way. Um, but, yeah, Brian Dunning put out this. Uh, he does a, a podcast called Skeptoid. He's a science communicator, science writer, but science friction is a, a documentary film about uh, scientists and how they are misrepresented in the media. 
And it's mostly scientists and science writers or science communicators that have been on these shows like paranormal caught on Kate or mm -hmm. on tape um, and how they are edited and yeah. they explain what they said yeah. and then how they are edited. Um, and a great example is my editor, Ben Rafford. Uh, he did an interview where as he was talking and giving his explanation, he asked prior to it, he said, I'm going to write about this. Do you mind if I record it? And the production guy said, yes, go ahead. Which was a mistake on his part, really. Sure. Um, because now we could actually see what the actual interview was compared to what was the edited version. And when you hear them and th that they play it in the film, when you hear them side by side, you're like, holy shit, they left out the important parts and yeah. made this skeptic sound yeah. like a believer. Yeah, left out the mm -hmm. word not or something. Yeah. They, yes. Um, I was a part of a show um, for like 18 seconds. And I know what I said, but the way they edited it made it sound completely different. Yeah. Yep. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, it only I takes mean, one word, you know, and, and – you, and your context completely changes. Yeah, have you seen and, the doc the docu series? Um, the first one's called Sir No Face, and there's three of them. Have you? I've seen the first one. Yeah, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? Such shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. I love having this guy on. I just sit here. I don't get. I mean, I'm trying not it's to lead him in any direction. So just ask. Hey, what are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, if if. If you if you have this monumental monumental holy grail type evidence of an afterlife or life beyond life, you know, uh, the, the consciousness survives death, what have you. If you have this ultimate evidence, then you publish it or you bring it to the scientist. You yeah. bring it to a peer reviewed journal and say, "Here, I have this. I'm writing it up. Here's all the details." And then let experts in various fields look at it and critique it you don't make your own pay-per-view freaking mockumentary and you send it around this really piece of shit of grainy footage that you you have nothing else to back it up nothing and, and you put it out there and expect people to believe you and and granted you will you will have people that'll buy into it because there's always going to be people that buy into that crap but when you really have somebody that knows what they're doing and look at it to scrutinize it, it's going to, it's, it crumbles. It really yeah. crumbles. And, and that's her uh, no face thing. Yeah. That was, well, that if was, you, like, you, you only watch the first one. one. Yes. But if you, look, alert, if you only watch the first one. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've, I watched all three of them. Right. And in the yeah, first, I'm like, okay, maybe he got something, but then it goes from a ghost to aliens a to fake alien, aliens, yeah. to men in black, to him getting shot at on the street by the third one. I'm like, okay, man, this is uh, this isn't even believe <laughs> not remotely believable anymore. Yeah, you know, I like I'm trying really hard to see a logical point on it, and I can't. Right. This is complete right. fiction and horseshit. I got. Well, I totally forgot. Yeah, you I made Joe sit down and watch it when we were all together at Gary's place after Gary went to bed. Yeah, the first one, which you said you seen, you know, you're talking about a, a ghost. Um, the second one, midway through, you know, he's talking about um, alien greys. And I happened to mention, I said, damn, Joe, you have a hard time remembering it started out as a ghost, huh? And he goes, holy shit. Yeah, you're right. Like I thought we were talking about aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of aliens, where you, we didn't finish that discussion with you earlier. Where do you weigh in on that? So I, uh, when it comes to life in the universe, yes, I, I, I do think that there is life out there somewhere. Um, uh, will we ever make contact? I doubt it. At least not in my lifetime. I, that I can pretty much guarantee that, um, okay. the, the immense distances, when you start talking about the distances and really thinking about the concept of, of like the closest habitable planet is what, like 37 light years or something like that. And to something think about like how long it would actually take us to get there, um, yeah, right. with our current technology, not going to happen. Um, do I think aliens have visited us so they could put graffiti in our cornfields no <laughs> <laughs> i mean what's honestly if you're going to make the trip make it count yeah like, don't put graffiti don't uh don't perform surgery on cows in the in in out in the farm fields um and if you're going to do butt stuff you know by all <laughs> means take it back to your ship and do that but don't just 
plop them down and say, all right, here, you know, gotcha. Cause you know, you're essentially raping people. Um, don't do that. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. Um, do, I wish they were here. That would be great because I'm all about Star Wars. I, I I would love that. If you could show me some kind of uh, interstellar travel that we don't have to worry about the, the time it would take yeah. to get to other planets. Because I would love, I mean, I don't have enough time to explore this planet. But I would definitely jump on a, through a Stargate and, and go visit another planet just to say, yeah, I was on another planet. I'm an alien. Yeah, Woo! Um, yeah. But... <laughs> Do I think they're here? No, I don't think there's so, reptilians here. I don't, I don't, I don't, it's, I don't think the inhabitants of uh, uh, Zeta Reticuli are here. I don't yeah. think any of that. Um, abduction cases, when, when I have looked into them very briefly, a lot of the details just don't add up. Um, there's issues with them. So I don't think, I don't think the aliens are here. I, I wish, I, I'm a big fan of X-Files. I really wish they were here. Sure. No, I don't think they are. To follow up your point, though, if we were able to in your lifetime to get to another planet, does that mean we have the authority to do butt stuff to them? Asking for a friend, Gary? Asking for a friend, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i got to choose my words carefully. Yes. I yes. heard some things about you, Gary. Um, uh oh. <laughs> uh, it, it's probably all true. I, can't, I probably can't deny it. I, I would hope that we would follow the prime directive. So yes, all no my harm. out there, yeah. you know, don't interfere, oh, do no I mean, harm. Yeah. No butt stuff. That's those no are the butt three. stuff. If you're going to do first contact, then make sure that they're, the civilization <laughs> is ready for that. You know, I mean, cause yeah. that's that concept. Think about that. Like the, the, I think what the, the second Star Trek, Star Trek movie, um, the recent one, uh, yeah. with the, with the, the Ratha Khan remake, the beginning of that, when they violate the prime directive and, and I mean this primitive race on this planet and they reveal the enterprise, like you have just started a religious cult right there yes. because yes. now they're looking at you and you are, you are God. the gods in the well, sky. I, I, I can tell you, I'm pretty quite certain Gary would be okay if a religious uh, cult or whatever started underneath him. Um, <laughs> He'd never love, had one. He'd, he'd, lo he'd love to go to underneath a foreign planet. Him. Wink, wink. Yeah, he'd love <laughs> to go to a foreign planet, and yeah. people start drinking Kool Aid and doing other crazy shit in his name. Yeah, you know, sugar-free Kool Aid though. I'm diabetic. But yeah. always the argument too that is, um, well, you know, the news and look what the government put out, and look what these fighter pilots are seeing. These super fast, you know, uh, oh, aircraft. You, can't, like tr you can't trust the government. And. Yeah, it's, I, it's like, I work for the government. And you can't trust the government, so we'll um, stick that there. Who's to say that we don't have that? Well, I think You're that right. we do have technology, unmanned technology that that can travel at those speeds. I think yeah. we do, and I mean, I don't know why well, for, that would be for so the longest long time. Though the 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 aliens we were seeing in the sky were in a triangle shape with lights. That also happens to look like the stealth bomber once they actually released it. Yeah, Could that yeah. have been the stealth bomber up there? Test fight. You're right. I, although I don't, I think they run a risk if you're putting it out in front of an F-18 pilot that he's not going to go maverick and shoot the thing down. Yeah, you would I think, think it, they'd want those guys in on it if they're going to film it and release it for whatever. Well, their that's is. they actually would rather have him not know. So when he's not able to shoot it down, one is now tested for them. And two, it's that good deflection fake story. Um, I think what we're normally at least 60 years behind military yeah. technology of what we're aware of. Um, Have you seen yeah, Top Gun, though? Maverick would shoot that shit down. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. All Only right. if Goose talks to him. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, we're we're almost at two hours, guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can't even be tonight, Joe? Well, got he's a hot I, date? Yeah. Joe doesn't want to be up till six in the morning with Kenny going, Oh God, I found the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so many times. Cat balls. It's always cat balls. I've I've woken up my wife. Like she's been out cold like one o'clock in the morning because I found the answer to something. Like I <laughs> awesome. literally solved yes. the, the mystery. Didn't realize what time it was. Just ran because uh, this office here is on our second floor. So it's a 
our third bedroom. So I go out right down the hall, bang the door open. Honey, honey, get up. I found it. I found it. I solved the mystery. It's awesome. She's like, it's fucking two o'clock in the morning. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Would it still been solved six hours from now? But now, now, now's the time. We have to celebrate now. I'm going to go get shots. Come on. So when, Ken, when Kenny goes missing here shortly, it's not going to be an unsolved mystery. I think we'll figure out what happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Kenny, man, thanks so yeah. much for your time tonight, dude. This has been fascinating and fun. And awesome. I definitely want to check some of your stuff out and uh, keep in touch. And we'll send you some of the crazy shit we come across to get your opinion on. Absolutely. And, and after Absolutely. tonight's discussion, um, I feel comfortable calling myself an expert now. I'm not sure in what, but in something. <laughs> expert chair center? Yes, I am going oh. to be an expert in something. Yes. <laughs> All right. Cap all. For chat, guys, thanks for watching. Greatly appreciate. Have a good night, everyone.